Uh, hello everybody and welcome to the Python tutorial. This is a series of lessons designed for programmers with little to no experience, people who want to get into programming and don't know where to start. So the idea of this series of tutorials is that we'll take beginning programmers from what a programming language is, how to input basic information, and we'll build on it through a series of lessons that will end with the inclusions of graphics, sounds, animations for some basic to moderately complex games. Now, there's a long way between that part of the tutorials and here, but this is definitely a good place to start if you've never had any programming experience. I'm by no means a professional programmer. This is something I do as a hobby. I do it for fun, and I find it to be really enjoyable. When I was first learning how to program in Python, I found YouTube videos were very helpful for me. And over the last two years, I think I've gotten a lot better. And what I found was some of the videos that I looked at were hard to follow, they didn't have a logical sequence for me, and I ended up having to look at a variety of different channels and a variety of different programmers, and I wanted to create a series of lessons that was kind of a one-stop shop for programming in Python. So that's what we're going to be doing probably over the next months. Now the first thing you'll notice is I've already installed Python and I have installed Python version 3.2.5. This isn't the most recent version of Python. In fact, Python's up to like 3.3 point something right now. But uh, we're going to be using 3.2.5 because later when we get into graphics and sounds and animations, we're going to need to import some modules. Most notably, we'll be uh, transitioning into Pygame. And as of right now, Pygame is not optimized to work with version 3.3 and above. So right now it won't be a huge problem if you're using any version of Python 3. Uh, you should be able to follow along even if it is a newer version, but I would recommend getting 3.2.5 if you plan on following along for the entire series of videos. Uh, Python 2 will not work. There's some major changes from Python 2 to 3. So if you're following along with an earlier version of Python, you probably will experience some errors. Now in the description there's a link to download Python. On that page you'll find the most recent version of Python and what you should probably do is click on get older versions of Python uh, and download 3.2.5. So the screen that's up right now is the Python shell. Uh, when you download Python this is the interactive development environment that will pop up and we're going to be using this for a while this isn't necessarily where you would write full programs, but this will give us an idea of what we can type into Python and how it will respond. I'm just going to put my cursor up there by those three carrots. And where we're going to start is looking at how Python handles uh, just simple mathematical calculations, things that almost everyone has done since elementary school. And we're going to look at addition, subtraction, multiplication, and so on. So when I'm in the interactive development environment right here, and I type 2 plus 3, Python's going to interpret that. It's going to do the mathematical calculations and return 5. You know, similarly, if I were to do 4 plus 6, it returns 10 as you would expect. Uh, Python can also do subtraction. 9 minus 4 returns a value of 5. 2 minus 6 returns a value of negative 4. And so it's, it's simple mathematics that most of us have done. Um, using multiplication in a computer environment, we often use the star for to represent the multiplication symbol. Python does that as well. 5 times 5 equals 25. 2 times 12 equals 24. And those are your three basic mathematical symbols. So uh, we can do raised to the power of or exponentiation. However, that looks a little different than it typically does in a computer environment. If I wanted to raise 2 to the power of 6, I would let Python know I want to do that by putting in two multiplication symbols next to one another. Two, a double multiplication symbol, 6, would read 2 raised to the power of 6, and that is 64. 
2 raised to the power of 5 is 32. Um, when you're using exponentiation in a lot of other computer programs, that's noted by the, the little caret symbol. So if I want to do 3 raised to the power of 4 in a lot of programs, uh, particularly computer programs that represent math, that's how we do raised to the power of. Python will not see that symbol as a raised to the power of symbol. In this case, it returns 7, 6, caret 3, returns 5. Now, I'm not experienced enough to know what exactly that symbol is doing. In all the programming I've done, I've never had to use that caret symbol. Python doesn't see that as a syntax error, but it is not raised to the power of. Uh, we can do simple division, and division is also as simple as you would think it would be, but there's some nuances to doing division in Python that will come into play as you do more advanced programs. If I were to do something simple like 10 divided by 2, uh, of course that's going to be equal to 5, but Python doesn't return 5, it returns 5.0. If I were to do 15 divided by 5, of course that equals 3, but Python's going to return 3.0. What that is is a float very or uh, a float type number. Uh, everything we've done up to this point has had no decimal points, and that has been integers. There's a big difference between an integer and a float in Python, and standard division will always return a float number. We'll get more into the difference between data types, in particular integer and float, in future lessons. But floats are just kind of a guesstimation to a real number, an approximation. They can be accurate, but floats in Python are not always completely 100% mathematical accurate. And if you're doing a program or an application that requires mathematical pre precision, that can be a problem. Um, where this can be demonstrated is, let's say we look at a division problem like 2 divided by 3. Um, as you might expect, that, that is equal to two-thirds, and that's represented in decimal form as 0.6666 repeating. If we did something like 5 divided by 3, that's 1 and two-thirds, so you would expect Python to return 1.6666 repeating, and it doesn't. It rounds the last number up to 7, so 1 and two-thirds and two-thirds are just slightly different from one another. If we do something like 7 divided by 3, that returns 2.3 repeating with a 5 on the end. That's 2 and 1 third. It's not a huge deal, and it probably won't play a big role in 99% of the programs you do as you get better at this, but it is worth noting that when you do division, uh, Python doesn't always give you a mathematically 100% accurate answer. One way around that is to do uh, something called integer division, or I guess it's not a replacement of division, but it's an important mathematical operation that we'll be using in future lessons quite a bit. Integer division returns the greatest number of whole numbers, or the greatest number of times a number will go into another. So if I did 2 integer division 5, it's going to return a value of 0, because 2 divided by 5, 5 will not go into 2, one full time, so it returns a zero. If I were to do the number 12 divided by three, I'm gonna get four. It goes in exactly four times with no remainder, so that is an accurate answer, but if I were to do something like 14 divided by three, it would return four as well. So we get three, six, nine, 12. It will not go in one more full time to get 15. So what Python's doing with integer division is just taking the decimal or the remainder and ignoring it and returning just an integer. There's also a command, the last command we're going to look at in the base, ma base mathematical commands in Python is a modulo command or the remainder. If I wanted to get the remainder of a division problem, let's say 4 mod 2 is how you would say that, 4 mod 2, 2 will go into 4, 2 full times with a remainder of 0, and Python will return a 0 to let me know there is no remainder. But if I were to do something like 2 mod 3, 
2 divided by 3, 2, or a th 2 will not take 3 fully. You'd have 0 remainder of 2, and so the mod command will give you the remainder. If I were to do something like 5 mod 3, 3 will go into 5 once with a remainder of 2, and will return a value of 2. So when you're doing fractional notation, if you were to do 5 integer division 3, it's going to return 1 because the, the answer in fractional form is 1 and 2 thirds. It's going to give you the whole number and the decimal or the fraction will just be eliminated. If I were to do 5 mod 3, it will return 2. What it's doing in that case is you have the number 1 with a remainder of 2 or 1 and 2 thirds, and so it's returning that 2. Now you're not just limited to uh, simple mathematical calculations with two numbers. You can use uh, multiple numbers as well. If I were to do something like 3 plus 6 minus 4 plus 10, those numbers all put together 15. 3 plus 6 is 9, minus 4 is 5, plus 10 is 15. Uh, Python does follow your standard mathematical order of operations. If I do 4 plus 5 times 3, you're going to get a value of 19. That's because the 5 multiplied by 3 is executed before the addition of 4. So you get 5 times 3, which is 15, Adding 4, that equals 19. You can also do negative numbers. You could type in negative 7 times 4 plus 14 raised to the power of 2. And that's going to return a number of 168. But in standard mathematical form, the exponents will be executed first then the multiplication, then the addition. So that's something very important to keep in mind. Uh, much like you would in math, you can use parentheses to dictate the order of operations that you think is best or how you need it to execute. Uh, earlier I typed in 4 plus 5 times 3, and then it gave us a number of 19. But if I were to, in parentheses, 4 plus 5, 4 plus 5 there, multiplied by 3, I'm going to tell Python that I want the addition to be executed first. 4 plus 5 is 9, times 3 is 27. Just like you would write in math, you can use parentheses to change the order of operations. If I were to type negative 7 times, in parentheses, 4 plus 14, raised to the power of 2, that 4 plus 14 will execute first, then it will be raised to the power of 2, and finally it will be multiplied by negative 7. It creates a difference in an answer of 168 to negative 2,268. It's a pretty big difference, so pay attention to those orders of operation. It doesn't always execute straight from left to right. Uh, you can cause some errors if you don't type in your formulas correctly. If I were to do 7 plus and leave the last number off, Python's going to return a syntax error. Uh, what a syntax error just tells me that I've given an invalid combination of symbols. When, it, when Python sees the plus symbol, it's expecting a number, or as we'll discuss later, a string. Since I didn't provide that information, it simply returns an error. Um, much like if I just put in the exponentiation, but I didn't put in any numbers, you don't have the first number or the last number. It's going to return an invalid syntax because it doesn't know what to raise to the power of what. Another common syntax error that will occur is missing parentheses. If I wanted to do our problem above 4 plus 5 times 3, that will return an invalid syntax as well because we're closing a parentheses that was never opened. And I'm not 100% certain that this will show up in the video, but if you're following along with uh, Python shell on your own, 4 plus 5, when you type the close parentheses, it will make the standard Windows uh, stop sound. 
Um, to me, it kind of sounds like a guitar chord. So if that doesn't show up in the video, as you're typing along in Python, if you hear that sound, it will clue you, hey, you've done something wrong, take a quick look at the line you're typing, because there's an error and it's not going to execute correctly. Now, if you close a parenthesis that wasn't open, it will give you an invalid syntax error. If you open a parenthesis that you never close, Python will act a little bit different. If I were to do open parentheses 4 plus 5 times 3 and not close my parentheses, I hit enter, and I say to myself, well, what's going on here? It's not returning a number. I hit enter again, nothing. Hit enter again, nothing. Python's going to wait until it gets a close parentheses to do anything. If I finally do close the parentheses, you can see right here that it kind of creates a gray box from the start to the end. It's a really nice feature in the Python development language. Um, when you have an open parentheses and a close parentheses, it will highlight the area that the parentheses covers. When you start using statements that have three or four sets of parentheses, this is really useful to see if you've closed all your open parentheses to avoid getting a syntax error. Once I close the parentheses, if, if I hit enter, it executes 4 plus 5 times 3 and returns a number of 19. But if you're not closing your parentheses, Python is waiting for other for additional input on the other line. So if I do 4 plus 5 times 3, hit enter a few times, and then say plus 5, all that white space between the 4 plus 5 times 3 and the final plus 5 doesn't really make a bit of difference. This executes 224, and that's not a syntax error, even though it looks a little bit goofy. Um, the last thing you might run into when doing basic mathematical calculations is just like in standard math, you cannot divide by zero. So 20 divided by zero is going to give you a division by zero error. Python doesn't know how to interpret that, and so a division by zero will crash your programs. That's really all there is to using Python as sort of a calculator. Again, this tutorial was designed just to be a simple introduction to the development environment. Uh, get your feet wet, type some commands into Python, and get some responses. Hopefully this makes a ton of sense to you. If, if the basic mathematics are a bit of a struggle, maybe programming is not your thing. But we're going to continue. Um, the next lesson we're going to be doing is looking at some of the ways Python can handle variables. Um, this is going to be you know, some of the same basic math, but we're going to be signing those numbers to variables and doing multiplication, division, integer division, and things like that. But we're going to be setting it to variables. So hopefully you found this tutorial to be helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the content that we've covered, go ahead and leave a message in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I can. But I look forward to seeing everybody for the next tutorial and have a great day.